the last couple of months I've been working for Panda Bear, I've had a lot of people always asking me scared, you know, what happens if I get seized? How do I know if I got seized? Will I get seized? Is this seized? So many different weird questions, people worrying about, about the general topic. I just have to say, first of all, chances of getting seized are extremely small, okay? And they'll be even smaller if you follow my steps, which I will showcase in this video. You guys need to remember that there's always a chance, you're always taking a risk, so just keep that in mind. But if you want to reduce the risk as much as possible, then you should do these things. Just before we fully start, I'd like to say, if you guys can, please subscribe. If you can join the Discord server, please do so. We do exclusive giveaways there. If we hit a thousand subs by the end of April, I'm going to roll three giveaway winners instead of just one. I'll do two on YouTube, one exclusively on Discord, so make sure you're there. That's pretty much all I want to say, so I'm just going to get into it. Now, if you want to understand what the word seize means, is basically customs in your country take the package and they don't give it to you they take it and they maybe ask you to pay a fee or they fine you you know whatever the circumstances may be most of the time they'll just take the package and say you can't take it uh, and you need to pay a fee first of all if you did already get seized and you're watching this video after you got seized just ignore all their letters don't don't pay them anything just ignore it okay you don't as long as you don't reply they don't have any proof or evidence that you actually delivered the, uh, or shipped the pack package could be someone else using your name and address so just don't reply to them and then they can't do anything so now i'm going to get into the specifics of how you can um reduce uh, the chances of getting seized first of all use recommended shipping lines okay i'm just going to go on the estimation tool and let's say i'm shipping to the usa i'm just shipping a package and i've seen i see all these packing options and it's like okay this is cool i want the fastest shipping though i, I care about speed i would use hk ups because the shipping times are so slow hk ups or just ups in general have relatively strict facilities especially when you compare them to uh ems and just general us customs so you with ups uh, shipping lines you, there's a higher chance that your package will get cracked so stay away from them if you're shipping to the us use krems okay it's the best shipping line it's the most reliable most consistent you can either use krems or krems actual weight which is this one whatever is cheaper just use that if you're in europe okay use tariffless the tariffless shipping line i'm going to show it right now so let's say poland 1g use europe tariffless line or even line b nowadays works we've got insurance on this one just use this one it's cheaper than normal um, tariffless signs basically the same thing stick with the shipping line and customs will not be an issue okay this shipping line is triangle uh, is a triangle shipping line meaning it will go to the netherlands or belgium first well in this case it actually goes to luxembourg so it will go to luxembourg first and then it'll go to germany and then it'll go to you and once it clears in luxembourg which it has a high chance of doing so because luxembourg customs aren't necessarily strict it just gets delivered to you and in your local country so for example poland you won't have any more issues so use this shipping line if you're in the uk use uk line or gde ems if you're in canada use either sao or canada uh, p line b right these two options are the best sao is kind of trash i'm not gonna lie as you can see it it's really slow it's inconsistent it doesn't even offer insurance so if you can stick with canada p line b i know a lot of people say gde ems but it's more expensive so it's really your choice both canada doesn't there's not a huge risk so the second thing is um shipping lines also if you can if you are in any other country other than the eu so if you're in an asian country or you're if in, a, in an african country for example or south american stick with ems shipping lines okay so let's say i wanted to ship to the uae I would, out of all these options, I would go with KIEMS because it offers insurance or even GDEMS. As you can see, 100% um, of parcels have been delivered. None of them are yet to deliver. Shipping uh, times are quite quick. You could also use RMX, uh, but it's only got uh, a basic insurance. So it doesn't offer the whole thing back. So that's also another thing you need to consider. Um, so yeah, just use EMS to most countries. That will be your best choice. If you're in the EU though, use tariffless, okay? So that's the, sec that's the, that's the thing you need to worry about. If you're shipping parcels, never, ever, ever ship more than 10 kilo because you're just taking a risk, okay? I know people are going to be boozy and they're going to say in the comments, well, 10 kilograms is fine. I've shipped, I've shipped 15 kilograms. I've shipped 25 kilograms, whatever. Split your parcels if you can. You're just taking unnecessary risks. You're giving customs another reason to take control of your package. If they see a higher weight, if they see more things inside of your parcel, they are going to get more suspicious, naturally. So stay below 10 kilograms. I'm actually going to add on to that. Stick to around three items per kilogram, okay? So if you've got a three kilogram parcel, you should have around nine items. You shouldn't have like a one kg parcel with 30 things because then your declaration is going to look absolutely bonkers. If you declare um, $12 for your one kilogram package, but you've got 30 things, it's going to look like everything you paid for was like 33 cents, which makes zero sense. So keep the quantity of items relatively low. Three, to ki three per kilo is a good ratio. You can also risk it, but just remember to keep it in higher weights. Declaration um, wise, I'm also going to have to get onto that. Declaration is very important in maintaining um, like a realistic package value. So 
Customs will seize your parcel or will uh, pull it over if they see that something about it is suspicious. One of those things could be declaration. If you've got like an eight kilogram parcel and you declare one dollar, how what are the odds that the customs officer is going to look at this package containing things from China and there's like 20 things inside and you declared one dollar. So to them, it looks like you paid one dollar for everything. That makes zero sense. Okay, declare realistic amounts. Look back at my video about declaration. Everything's there. There's a whole rundown. And also, if you're in countries in the EU, I would recommend not shipping um, Louis Vuitton because I've, I've seen people with Louis Vuitton have many issues. Once a guy paid 300 euro uh, in fines because he shipped a Louis Vuitton bag. So just try to stay away from that company, uh, from that brand in general. But yeah, very quick video. Just in conclusion, if you don't want to get seized, follow what I said in this video. So use trusted shipping lines, declare good amounts based on the video I made before. And just check back to the video. And if you're ever confused, leave a comment. I'll tell you how much you should declare. Don't use um, more expensive, stricter shipping lines because there's a higher chance that they'll seize you because they're more interested in what they're delivering as they, they, they have a reputation to uphold. Um, furthermore, don't use budget shipping lines either. So EUB, for example, is not a good option, especially since they don't offer insurance. So if something was to happen, you have no way of getting your money back. Keep the weight down below 10 kilograms if you can. If anything, split the parcels into two. So if you've got 15 kilograms, ship one package seven and a half and another seven and a half, problem solved. Keep the quantity of items down. Don't have a crazy amount of items for a really low amount of money. But yeah, that pretty much sums up. It's a very simple topic and it's not something you should have to stress about because it doesn't happen often, okay? I've been a helper on Panda Buy for, I think, what, eight months now, something like that. Like a, a, a pretty long period of time, maybe six, seven months. And never have I had someone get back to me after I helped them ship a package and tell me they got seized. So just follow what I'm saying because I know what I'm talking about, okay? Stick to the things I said. They're going to pop up on screen now. Stick to this, okay? Trust me that you can't go wrong by going this. And if something does somehow happen, you're using shipping lines that have insurance. You're going to get your money back. Don't stress. Don't worry. No one's going to come to your house and arrest your parents or arrest you. Just listen to what I'm saying, okay? Now, that's pretty much it. As I said before at the beginning, leave a sub, a comment if you have any questions or any feedback you want to give me. Join the Discord server because there will be exclu exclusive giveaways and updates there. If something happens to my channel, for example, I'll make a new one and then you'll find out there. But yeah, that pretty much sums it up. I appreciate you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.